Hi guys, well by now you'll probably be aware of what to expect from the new GTX 1660 Ti, but in today's video we're going to be checking out a standard run-of-the-mill edition by way of the Zotac GTX 1660 Ti. The benefit from this card over others is the fact that it's going to sit at the base MSRP and it's going to offer you better value for money. Now unlike the amp editions that we typically test out, this standard version arrives without some of the bells and whistles, such as a backplate and a factory overclock. However, it does have one thing in its favour. This card is super compact and will therefore be ideal for a small form factor build. So we mentioned that this 1660 Ti here sits at the base MSRP and that means it's going to cost 469 in Australia, 269 in the UK and then 269 in the US as well. So this is perhaps one of the cheapest 1660 Ti's which makes it easier for us to recommend since it doesn't enter that RTX territory. We'll obviously be doing the usual analysis on this particular card here, but our main focus today is really going to be identifying whether we can you know, slap on a decent manual overclock, perhaps taking it beyond what the more expensive 1660 Ti's offer. Okay, here is our Zotac card. The standard version has a very similar shroud to that of the amp, although it is a different size and we don't get that wraparound. Now this is plastic and just partly conceals the heatsink underneath. And over the top section we of course have a twin fan configuration. We'll go into a bit more detail later on when we detach that cooler from the card. Now something which many of you will be very happy to see is the lack of RGB on this 1660 Ti. This is relatively unheard of in the GPU market, but with it omitted, the cost saving can be passed on to the end user. Now it's no surprise that our 1660 Ti is pretty small. Next to this Strix here we can really get a sense of how compact this unit is. This card will undoubtedly fill into most if not all computer cases, but here are the measurements. So for the length you're looking at 173mm, for the width you're looking at 100 and then the height is just 35mm. Being the standard version, this graphics card here is sat at the reference settings, and so the base clock is sat at 1500, and that boosts up to 1770, and the memory clock operates at 1500 or 12,000 effective. Now with the Firestorm software, we're able to nudge up those frequencies significantly, pushing that GPU boost up to 1958, and the memory clock up to 1750. And these are higher frequencies than the current fastest pre-clocked 1660 Ti. We'll be taking that overclock into our game benchmarks later on. Now some of the things just to note is that the 1660 Ti comes with the 6 gig of GDDR6, it is PCI Express 3.0 compliant, DirectX 12 ready, and it supports OpenGL 4.5. Our card is quite small and therefore it just takes up two spaces on your board and case. And on this back panel we've got a selection of four video outs and these consist of three DisplayPort 1.4s, those can give you up to 8K at 60Hz and just a single HDMI 2.0 and that offers 4K at 60Hz. And so not a lot to choose from there but either of those options should be the most popular. To power this graphics card we only need a 450 watt power supply and an 8 pin connection just like other cards in this series. The 1660 Ti lacks the SLI functionality and therefore we can't unfortunately combine it with another card. If we flip the card over there isn't a lot to talk about since there is no metal backplate. All we've got there is the exposed PCB and 6 screws which hold the heatsink onto the GPU. Okay, well we've taken the cooler off our 1660 Ti, and this is what Zotac are using. On the top side we of course have those twin cooling fans. Now if you look closely, you'll see that we have different sized fans. One is 70mm and the other 80mm. Underneath this, there is a large heatsink, which is a single piece covering more than just the GPU. This uses three 6mm copper heat pipes. And later on we'll be seeing what kind of thermal performance this can offer us. Detaching the heatsink means that we can also get an overview of the PCB too. Now this board here is notably smaller than other 1660 Ti's and it features a 4 plus 2 phase design. Although this isn't the same calibre as other cars that we've seen, it is still able to sustain a decent overclock. The driving force behind our 1660 Ti is NVIDIA's TU116. This is 12 nanometer and it utilizes a new Turing architecture. As we've mentioned numerous times in our video, this GPU makes use of the reference NVIDIA settings, so there is no modification to the clock speeds. 
Okay, well we've taken a close look at our Zotac card, but how does it perform? Well, we're gonna be applying that manual overclock that we reached earlier and putting it head to head with the Strix 1660 Ti, which has a factory overclock. This should help us to establish if there is any advantage to manually overclocking. So we're benchmarking a number of games that are in 1080p with maximum detail preset. If you wanna see how this card responds to other games and cards, please head over to the link in the description. While we check out these games, we're also going to have GPU-Z there running in the background to pick up on the peak GPU temperature. So we'll jump out of our last game for that. Okay, and if we just come out of our last game, we can check out the temperature. And there it is, as you can see, quite a bit higher than what we've seen from a triple fan configuration, but it's still within the realms of being safe. All right, well, that is the GTX 1660 Ti from Zotac. This card is obviously you know, quite basic in what it brings to the table, but that is partly what makes it so appealing. It has no RGB, no backplate, and no factory overclock. And because of this, we're able to pick it up for just 269 in the UK and US, and then 469 in Australia. 
Admittedly, the thermal solution on this Zotac card does trail behind what we've already seen there from the triple fan designs. However, that is something you come to expect by the very nature of using a much smaller heatsink and just two fans. On the flip side of this, we have a tiny compact graphics card, which is going to be a perfect match for a small form factor build. You know, where the larger cards are going to be uh, struggling to fit inside some cases, this Zotac card is going to pop into those confined spaces with ease. Now, that might not be a factory overclock with our card, but that doesn't mean we can't manually apply one ourselves. As you'll have seen, we're able to modify not only the GPU boost, but the memory clock too, and those figures aren't just conservative, they exceed what you're going to get on a pre-clocked 1660 Ti. Okay, well that concludes our video today guys. Uh, for more analysis comparing this card here to other models, more games and different resolutions, head on over to that full review link in the description and on the screen. Thanks very much for taking time out of your day to watch. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.